Let's look at some different scenarios here and put yourself in the shoes of an educator and think about how you would handle each of these scenarios. Here's the first scenario. A student couldn't pay significant portions of his assignment from work that's already, already been published on the internet. He's rephrased some of the work he's copied to try and disguise it and has tried to pass off the work as his own. To me, in this case, this is a clear academic offence. Here's the second scenario. A student copies work from a friend. The friend knows that his work may be copied, but still freely offers it. So the student who's copied the work clearly has committed an academic offence. But what about the friend who offered the work in the first place? Has he also committed an academic offence? That's a question, that's an open question. Here's the third scenario. A student uses a diagram in his PowerPoint presentation but forgets to identify the source of the diagram. Has that student committed an academic offence? If so, how serious is that offence? Again, that's an open question. A professor falsifies research data and publishes the research findings in a journal. It's not just individual students that plagiarize or commit academic offenses. From time to time, educators also do as well. And in this case, clearly the professor has committed an academic offense. Here's the final scenario. A suspected case of copying is raised to the head of department. However, because of other higher priority work, the case is not investigated. So what are the messages being sent out there? That academic integrity and copying is not a high priority work, it's not important to the department, uh, the department doesn't value academic integrity. Those are the kind of messages that are being put out by this particular scenario.